The reconstruction of Hiroshima could never have been achieved without the vehement efforts of its citizens, people who had lost everything with the flash of the atomic bomb, and survivors who suffer still from the after effects. Also instrumental was the dire longing for lasting peace and ensuring that such tragedy would never again befall humankind. The reconstruction itself was a complicated and meandering path, trodden by various organizations and individuals. This video was compiled from the local government perspective on Hiroshima's reconstruction, actions and desire of government officials for the benefit of officials in countries that have or are experiencing conflict. Our hope is that government officials in countries facing wide-ranging challenges in their recovery and reconstruction efforts will take inspiration from Hiroshima's experiences. Conflicts still erupt frequently around the world, and at this very moment, there are government officials in conflict-affected countries who are struggling to rebuild the lives of their people. Many overseas visitors to Hiroshima say that they want to learn about the city's post-war reconstruction. It may be that Hiroshima's experience can be a source of inspiration and hope for those currently engaged in reconstructing their country. August 6, 1945. Hiroshima was turned into ruins in an instant by a single atomic bomb. It is estimated that approximately 140,000 people had died by the end of the year. Contaminated by radiation, some said that no trees or plants would grow in Hiroshima for 75 years to come. Upon seeing the damage caused by the atomic bomb, what were the thoughts of the officials who had survived the bomb? How did they proceed with the rebirth of Hiroshima from ruins? At the root of Hiroshima's reconstruction was the strong conviction that such a devastating and inhumane act should never be repeated. What we have to do at this moment is to strive with all our might towards peace, becoming forerunners of a new civilization. This very conviction was the driving force that advanced the difficult process of reconstruction. Hiroshima used to be a military capital. With crucial army bases, it was positioned as a stronghold for advancing into the continent of Asia. Undamaged by air raids, the city became increasingly important to the military during the war. It was on August 6, 1945, that an atomic bomb was dropped on the city. Hiroshima's population was approximately 240,000 people in June 1945. On the day of the bombing, there were around 350,000 people in the city, including residents, soldiers, and commuters. Anything within a radius of 500 meters from the hypocenter was obliterated in a flash. Some 92% of the city's buildings either collapsed or disappeared. One month after the bomb, an editorial in the local newspaper said, the city of Hiroshima should never be abandoned as a permanent war memorial. More than 70 years later, Hiroshima is now flourishing as a major city of the Chugoku region. In 2019, it had a population of 1.2 million, making it the 10th most populated city in Japan. An international peace culture city. Passed down to this day, this was the principle behind Hiroshima's urban construction 
toward which the city's reconstruction progressed. This video explores the reconstruction of Hiroshima in three overlapping phases, recovery, transition, and reconstruction. The progression of Hiroshima's reconstruction, recovery phase. During this time, the highest priority in atomic bomb ravaged Hiroshima was rescue and relief operations toward survivors. However, the prefectural office was gone, and buildings such as City Hall had collapsed. Local government bodies and others that should have spearheaded efforts were in a state of paralysis. On the afternoon of the 6th, Hiroshima's district headquarters reported to the national government the total destruction of the prefectural office, city hall, and police agency. At the same time, a request was made to the military to rescue survivors. Initial response was made by the military. It removed rubble to clear roads, fought fires to prevent their spread, and carried out other rescue operations. The military, police, and fire brigades took a central role in the cremation and burial of the dead, having Shinto priests and Buddhist monks present whenever possible. In response to the unprecedented damage, citizens and government officials, who themselves were disaster victims, commenced efforts from their own workplaces. Ruins, dry riverbeds, and places where many seriously injured people gathered became aid stations. The restoration of lifelines also began from the very day the bomb was dropped. At the Hiroshima City Waterworks Bureau, employees, who themselves had suffered burns, repaired broken pumps and continued to supply water to the city. Employees covered in bandages undertook recovery efforts on the tracks and substations of the streetcar system. On August 9th, only three days after the bombing, Partial operation was resumed using carriages that had miraculously escaped with only minor damage. As for banks, the Hiroshima branch of the Bank of Japan took leadership. Three days after the bombing, people without passbooks were able to start withdrawing savings at 12 banks. There was hardly anyone who withdrew money under false pretenses. More than 80% of utility poles within one kilometer of the hypocenter had burned down. Employees of the electric power company restored them, installed electric wiring, and completed the restoration of power to homes by November. The progression of Hiroshima's reconstruction, transition phase, Rescue and recovery were begun immediately after the disaster. Action was also simultaneously taken to create an administrative system for reconstruction. The fact that the two commenced at almost the same time was extremely important for the reconstruction of Hiroshima. The war ended nine days after the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. Reconstruction in occupied Japan proceeded under the supreme commander for the Allied powers, known as the GHQ. During the Pacific War, which had extended over three and a half years, over 200 cities and towns in Japan were targets of air raids that caused massive destruction. After the war, the War Damage Reconstruction Agency commenced war damage reconstruction projects in 115 cities. Hiroshima City also became the target of a national project. Hiroshima 
、まあ、こういったところも復興計画を立てるわけですけど当時はまあ広島県の方があ都市計画家なんかもちゃんと存在してまして課長さんを中心として復興計画を立てていくわけですけれども、まあ、広島市の方はまだ制度的に十分整っていなくて1946年の1月2月段階で。えー、復興審議会復興局というものを設立して対応していってだんだんとあ市の方の復興計画が整っていくという形になります。GHQ の方は当初はあまりその介入してこなかったんですけども、まあ、日本全体の復興計画があまりにも課題であるということで1949年頃から、えー、復興計画を縮小しなさいという形で介入してまいります。It was in 1946, a year after the atomic bombing and the end of the war, that the Hiroshima city government started working on full scale reconstruction plans. In January, a reconstruction bureau was set up in the Hiroshima city government, and in February, a reconstruction council was launched. The establishment of a long term plan for reconstruction was considered from a variety of angles. It represented the start of the formulation of full fledged reconstruction plans. 当時の広島市の町の構造というのは、城下町時代の町をこう引き継いでまして、道路が狭いとか、公園が少ないとか、そういうふうなことだったんですけど、戦災を契機として、近代的な都市にしようということで、まあ、やりたいことはいっぱいあったわけですね。それで、まあ、大事業になるわけですけども、まあ、土地格整理という事業を進めるときに、えー、広島市だけではあ、まあ、やりきれないということで、えー、県にもお願いしてですね、まあ、東部復興事業西部復興事業ということで、えー、東の方は広島市西の方は県ということで、えーえー、事業を進めていくわけですね。でまあ、考え方が県と市でで異なる時にはですね。えー、両者が戦災復興委員の前に一緒に行ってですね、えー、戦災復興委員に、えー、調整していただくということで、まあ、県がかなり主導はあの計画的には主導したわけですね、まあ、事業はあの土地格整理ということで、まあ、あの市民の協力を得ながら、えー、両者が連携して進めていくというふうな形になったわけです。Based on a variety of proposals, Hiroshima Reconstruction City Planning was drafted and approved in October 1946. The first agenda item resolved was the Hiroshima Recovery City Planning Road Decision, and the next item to be decided was the Parks and Green Area Plan. Planning for roads and parks required land readjustment to secure necessary land. Land readjustment, as part of the reconstruction plan, covered as much as 1,520 hectares. About 1,320 hectares, which required urgent land readjustment, were designated as project areas. Of these, it was decided that the city government would handle 785 hectares. While the prefectural government would handle 537.5 hectares. The projects, however, did not progress as expected. 昭和21年10月に決定された復興都市計画は、現在の広島の町を象徴する平和記念公園や平和大通りにあたる公園や道路が計画されるなど、計画そのものは現在の広島の町の基礎となるような画期的な内容の計画でありました。しかし、当時の広島市は人口の減少などにより市税が約8割使用料手数料が約6割も減収したことや物価の異常な高騰が起こったことなどから極度の財政難の状況にあり復興都市計画に基づく復興事業は事業を進めたくともその財源がないという状況でしたまた原爆投下の翌9月に広島県内で約 2,000 人もの死者を出した大規模な台風が発生したことも復興を阻害した一因と言われています広島市はこのような状況を打破するために市長や議長自らが上京し国に対して広島市内にあった旧軍用地を広島市へ無償で払い下げることや他都市にはない特別な補助金を広島市へ付与することなどを要望しましたしかし全国に120もの戦災都市がある中で
何の根拠もなく国有地である旧軍用地を広島市に無償で譲与することや広島市にのみ特別な補助金を付与することは国にとって大変困難なことであり再三にわたる陳情にもかかわらずこれらの要望が受け入れられることはありませんでした Hiroshima's reconstruction plan faced a variety of difficulties that included shortages of funding, manpower, and materials, as well as the scarcity of public land. The progression of Hiroshima's reconstruction, reconstruction phase. In February 1949, the Hiroshima city government made major changes to its strategy. Mayor Hamai Shinzo, who had won Hiroshima's first mayoral election in April 1947, took the helm. In the face of a reconstruction plan that was stalled due to a lack of funds, the city government explored solutions, such as obtaining special subsidies from the national government. And the release of government property. However, negotiations for special treatment met difficulties. Consulted by the mayor, it was Teramitsu Tadashi, originally from Hiroshima City and Director General of the Proceedings Department of the House of Councillors, who proposed the idea of a special law. Article 95 of the new constitution provides that. A special law applicable only to one local public entity cannot be enacted by the Diet without the consent of the majority of the voters of the local public entity concerned, obtained in accordance with law. In an effort to find an opening for the enactment of a special law, the Hiroshima city government petitioned the GHQ, the national government, And the Diet. In May 1949, the National Diet unanimously adopted the Hiroshima Peace Memorial City Construction Law. Hiroshima was Hiroshima City only to be enacted as a special law. It was a success in many ways, but it was also a success in many ways. It was also a success in many ways, but it was also a success in many ways. It was also a success in many ways, but it was also a success in many ways. It was also a success in many ways, but it was also a success in many ways. It was also a success in many ways, but it was also a success in many ways. It was also a success in many ways, but it was also a success in many ways. It was also a success in many ways, but it was also a 単なる復興でなくって、えー、平和な世界につながっていくような復興を目指したという点が理解されたのではないかなと思っています、えー、当時日本を占領していた連合国軍司令部もこの法律は世界に目を向けたものであり国際的にも大きな意義を持つと評価し協力してくれたと聞いておりますまだ一つの課題を乗り越えられた法律To obtain the consent of the majority in a local referendum. With a turnout of 65%, on July 7, 1949, the special law was eventually established, supported by a 91% majority. The mayor and officials of the city had motivated the people by appealing the need to reconstruct Hiroshima as a peace memorial city through national projects. Government officials confirmed that Hiroshima's reconstruction was not just about the recovery of urban functions. The underlying principle, which had the support of its citizens, was to be peace memorial city construction. Government officials adhered to this principle while overcoming numerous difficulties in undertaking the reconstruction plan. In accordance with the principles of the special law, Hiroshima prepared the Hiroshima Peace Memorial City Construction Plan in March 1952.
The plan was informed by opinions heard from citizens as well as from experts. Before the bombing, the Nakajima area, located close to the hypo center between two rivers, had been Hiroshima's most prominent commercial area. The 12.2 hectares of this area were to be turned into the Peace Memorial Park. The hypo center was to be revitalized into rich, green parkland and converted into a space that promotes awareness of the tragedy of war and the preciousness of peace. A proposal by Tange Kenzo and his associates was adopted out of 145 submitted proposals. Associated plans included a 100-meter wide road running east to west through the city and river greenification to highlight the beauty of the rivers flowing north to south. There were also policies that required time to determine, such as an ongoing debate as to whether the atomic bomb dome should be preserved or demolished. More than a few opposed keeping the dome because it resurrected tragic memories. However, the opinion to preserve it so as not to forget the horrors of the atomic bomb gradually grew. It was 21 years after the bombing that the city council finally resolved to permanently preserve the atomic bomb dome. Donations would cover the cost of preservation. The national government, the local government, and citizens joined forces to make the dome a symbol of the Peace Memorial City construction. In the course of reconstruction, the local government frequently met with opposition from residents. For example, in relation to dealing with the densely concentrated illegal buildings in front of Hiroshima Station. Eviction negotiations between the city government and residents proceeded with difficulty. In the end, there was no choice but forcible eviction. The last difficult project in Hiroshima's reconstruction was the Motomachi Area Redevelopment Project. The Motomachi Area was known as the Atomic Bomb Slum. There were over 1,000 illegal dwellings at one point. In 1969, the residential area's improvement law was applied to the 33-hectare Motomachi area. The Hiroshima prefectural and city governments jointly embarked on this major redevelopment. By 1978, high-rise buildings of up to 20 stories in height were completed, with a total of 4,566 apartments. The difficulty of securing the land for relocation was solved by building high-rise housing. It was unprecedented redevelopment in that a new living environment was provided without any forced evictions. Hiroshima しかし、The 2019 Hiroshima Peace Memorial Ceremony was attended by around 30,000 people who reconfirmed their commitment to peace. Among the attendees were overseas participants of a JICA development cooperation program called Nation Building of Conflict Affected Countries. They were from South Sudan, Somalia and Yemen. I wish the world leaders will come to, to this site to learn about uh, this uh, incident. 
because of the local government system that you have, which is very, very effective, is where we see development around uh, around Japan and uh, Hiroshima being a part of it. So it is really the work of the local government that we praise very, very much indeed. And one of the beneficiaries of that study, what? A senior official from Nigeria, who spoke at a side event of the 7th Tokyo International Conference on African Development, talked about a visit he had made to Hiroshima. I'm seated with a German consortium. Well, um, what I learned from Hiroshima last year that I came for a study tour is the system of governance of the Hiroshima prefecture, the way and manner uh, communities are carried along by the uh, local government. Uh, we are still uh, battling with the conflict, but there are a lot of issues that we have seen uh, by bringing in the community to help in and seeing how the agency can be reduced to the barest minimum. Even during the recovery phase, Local government officials in Hiroshima were already thinking about the future to be passed on to the next generation. While serving in roles that suited individual capabilities, they began formulating a recovery plan, and their efforts eventually led the national government to act. Of importance at that time was establishment of the future vision based on the principle of reconstruction, as well as leadership and commitment to realize reconstruction. Article 1 of the Hiroshima Peace Memorial City Construction Law stipulates its purpose as follows. It shall be the object of the present law to provide for the construction of the city of Hiroshima as a peace memorial city to symbolize the human ideal of the sincere pursuit of genuine and lasting peace. Hiroshima's reconstruction was supported by the presence of leaders and government officials who upheld this principle and maintained a strong will to achieve it. Article 6 of the same law states as follows. The mayor of Hiroshima shall, with the cooperation of residents and support from relevant organizations, establish a program of continuous activity toward completion of Hiroshima Peace Memorial City. In other words, a government cannot achieve reconstruction on its own. Cooperation between government and residents is essential so is never giving up. Hiroshima's efforts toward the promotion of peace continue to this day. Your aspirations will create your country's future. What are your aspirations? <laughs>